Hey, welcome to the third part of training 3D medieval boots. In this part we're gonna be finishing the high poly. So to start I wanna apply some of the thickness that we did with the dynamic subdivisions. And I also want to start placing everything nicely into place, so there are no gaps. So like I said early in part 2, I'm closing these gaps as a design choice, but also so the low poly will be easier to bake down. Also keep paying attention to the shape of the boots, keep tweaking them. and look to them from all angles. So I'm bringing them into Maya so it can model a little bit of a roundness where it goes into the sole. and just push them in, in the normal. And now as you can see we have a nice rounded transition from sole to boot. So I'm just going around the model, looking from all angles and fixing any gaps or intersections. So I'm going back into Maya to have a little bit more control of the topology and just quickly add some roundness. You want to pay close attention to these corners as they tend to mess up pretty often with polishing and so on. Apply the thickness. Now I'm starting to look how it will look like once I put in some cuts where we can do the stitching. So make a layer. Now we can start dragging out lines where the stitching will go. So to do lines like this I'm dragging them out all the time and just ctrl zing because I don't like how they look. Take your time doing this. So I'm just gonna place them all over the boots where I wanna have stitches go. Gonna do the same for the heel piece. We make a new layer and we're gonna drag out the line for the stitches. You can also edit these lines later on. You can morph them out if you did a morph target, or you just smooth them out with a smooth brush. And then you can redraw them. For part 
part 2 of this video we're gonna go back to Maya and we're gonna model a stitch. This stitch we're gonna be turning it into a brush inside ZBrush. So it's a really simple model, just have a square shape and bevel the edges and then we smooth it out and have a little bit of roundness. Then import it into ZBrush, now we can make a new insert brush. And as you can see, now we can drag out a stitch. But we want to have multiple ones, so we make a curve brush. Now we can drag out a line of stitches. And if you change this number, it will change the space between the stitches. Here we can change the depth of the stitches, the further the depth the more they will be punched into the surface. So I'm just gonna make a quick save of the stitch so I can reuse it. Now make a duplicate, and then we're gonna delete layers and now we can drag out our stitches. So now I'm just gonna drag out stitches on all the lines that we created earlier. We can also edit the stitches by hand with the move brush, just to space them out a little bit better. Gonna adjust the straps that we made early to fit the boots a bit better.
Let's also start mirroring the straps to the other side. Let's move everything into place on this side as well. Let's close the gaps. So I'm just creating little tweaks to the model, spinning around it and looking what I don't like. I'm pushing it out here a bit to help the silhouette, so the boots will be more separated from the pants. Let's duplicate the mesh and we can delete the subdivisions. I'm gonna delete the rest that we don't need and we can add some thickness back. It's the same as we did with the straps. We just want to create a nice thin layer of leather. Now we make a layer and then on that layer we're gonna polish. Now with the lay intensity we can adjust how much of a border the ladder will have. We're also going to be adding some noise, like we did with the straps, to break up the surface. Now we're gonna put some stitch lines in for the main part of the boots like we did earlier with the other part. This can take quite a while, that's why I sped it up by a lot. But just keep going until you like how it looks. Don't be afraid to spend a lot of time on this.
so now that we have all the lines in place we're gonna do the stitching again And remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. You can move it around after you put the curves with the move brush. So one of the best ways to break a surface up is just to add some noise. Breaking up surfaces is one of the most important parts when you're doing high polys. Because this will push it from a perfect looking fake thing to a realistic looking material. Now we're just sculpting some folds in by hand. So 
It's also nice to add some damage. Hey, I'm just damaging up the souls. So I'm just going over the boots and I'm sculpting with the stand-up brush wherever I think it's needed to have a little bit of extra volume. Let's also add a line around the border for some extra stitching. Let's go to the fun part of this video, to part 4, where we're gonna be working on the ladder details. We're just using really simple brushes for these. Most of them are using Alphast from ZBrush. So you wanna build the ladder up into layers. The first layer that we're gonna lay out is some memory folds. Everything I'm doing here in this part is what I learned from Arno Smits from a ZBrush Summit video from a few years ago. I'm gonna link it in the description. I highly recommend that you watch it, as it will just be the same process but really slow. And it's gonna explain everything in a lot of detail and show you how to make the brushes. So you just want to go over your whole model 
lay on some memory folds where it makes sense. Mostly where you have the big folds. You can just put some memory folds around them. I like to do all my layers of all the parts in one go. Like I'll do the memory folds of the main part, then the memory folds of the soul, the memory parts of this part. I don't want to keep switching brushes all the time. Also be sure that you're working with layers, so we can change the intensity of what we're doing later on. So the second step is to put some general folds. This will just create some happy accidents later on. So again, I'm just putting them on all the parts of the boots. For the third layer, I'm going to add some breakup folds. This will just be some folds to break up the surface. This workflow is how I build up all my surfaces. I'm just going in layer by layer and I'm slowly adding more details and we'll all come together in the end. So 
so for the fourth layer we're gonna be doing some grain direction this will just be the directionality of the ladder think about like if it was a piece of leather laid out how the direction would look like once we fold it into place And remember, because we're working with layers, we can easily tweak the intensity of all the layers that we're doing. For the fifth layer, we're gonna be refining the memory faults that we did earlier. Now we can kinda work off the earlier alphas that we laid down to make them connect a little bit better. With memory faults, think about where there would be a lot of pressure. Right here is where the shoe is bending, so there will be more memory faults here. For this layer we're going to be adding some stress to the stitches. Just so the stitches will look a little bit more blended in and will look more real. Not like they're just laying on top of the surface. Like I said earlier, one of the most important things is breakup. So we're gonna do another layer, we're gonna be doing some slight breakup. 
And the idea of a breakup is just to not have your whole surface look the exact same. You just want to add like little points of interest. Or like this is a thing that's popping out. Because in real life no surface is perfect. These little imperfections is what makes it perfect. It's also important to not just lay down all fast. At the end you want to create a new layer, you want to go in with hand and you just want to refine some areas, make some folds deeper and whatever. And it's up to you how much time you spend doing this. The more time you will spend doing it, the better your model will look like. It's also important to not waste too much time as these are little details. Let's fix some intersections. Just making sure that the straps are tightly against the boots. I deleted the buckles and the little bolts because we're going to be placing them in the low poly again. And I don't want to re-polygize every single buckle. So I'm just going to do one and I'm going to place them back in the low poly. But I want to have all the straps because we're going to be merging the straps together with the boots in the low poly. If you keep them as separate objects, it will be more difficult to skin. And the LODs will be worse, the MIP mapping, so you just want to keep as much together as you can. So I'm just adding some indenting to the straps and this will just sell the ID of realism a bit more. You can do some little folds that go between the stitches. And once again, things like this, it's just some small breakups that will make your surface look better. It's always good to have like one to five big breakups on the surface. Like you can look at it and like, oh, there's like a little scratch or whatever. Just something interesting. It could also be some damage, like some torn clothing, uh, a stitch line that's going outwards and in the pants, whatever. But just break your surface up with something interesting. 
For these boots I'm keeping it simple, I'm just putting in some deep scratches. And I'm also gonna add some surface noise with an alpha of leather details. And we're not gonna bake this down, it's not gonna be in the final high poly, but it's just to see how it will look like when it has some leather details. This is also a nice thing to do if you wanna take a high poly render inside ZBrush just to push your details. But once again, we're not gonna bake this down. These actual details are gonna be there in Substance Painter as we will have more possibilities to change it later on like we can change the size, the strength and we don't need to rebake it every time and yeah that's it for the third part of this series now that we have a high poly finished in the next part we're gonna export it to Maya and we're gonna start to do the retopology and the UVs and probably the bake as well so yeah, like always, if you enjoyed the video or learned anything, please like and subscribe. And bye, see you in the next one.